Hi, this is Bryce Huffman with Bridge Detroit, and I am here today with Detroit Police Department Assistant Chief Todd Bettison. How's it going? It's going great, sir. How are you? I am good. So I wanted to talk about COVID-19. Obviously, it's something that uh, the entire world has had to deal with, uh, and the Detroit Police Department is no different. So first, I want to just ask very generally, how has COVID impacted, uh, impacted the department? Pretty much like everyone else, um, what, I, what I would say is back when it first came out back in 2020, March, um, it, it, it was a scary time, right? And so um, we, we, we really didn't know what to expect. And Chief Craig at the time acted very quickly to start setting up the appropriate protocols and communicating with the health department. And so as far as exposure, who was exposed, you know, what did exposure look like, we erred on the side of caution. And so if we thought that an individual had been exposed and we immediately started going with the contact tracing, social distancing, et cetera, but it got to a point early on where we were reporting 200 members out quarantine, 300. And then at one point it got as high as 650 members of the department that were quarantined just based off of taking those precautions. Um, so we came up with the continuity of operation plans and we actually collapsed many of our, what we would call non-essential functions to ensure that we staffed and did our core function, which is answering 911 calls, investigating crimes. So recruiting, we shut down recruiting. Those officers that are typically out recruiting, we redeployed to the street. Telephone crime reporting unit, anywhere within the department, officers who worked our PAL lead, our, our officers that typically worked inside day assignments, admin, we had those all redeployed to the street, into the precincts, so that we can ensure that when citizens call 911, that we were still able to respond. All right. Uh, one of the things that you just kind of mentioned is that. Um, you had so many officers that were quarantined at a certain time. Uh, you know, we fast forward just a year, you know, obviously the vaccine is available now. Uh, what are we kind of seeing as far as the number of officers that are being uh, quarantined currently, um, officers that are still unvaccinated? So in regards to officers that are being quarantined um, now, the numbers are really, really low. We, we, we came up with policies, we followed CDC guidelines, my OSHA guidelines, wearing our mask and, and, and washing our hands, but we know that wearing the mask really did prevent the spread. So I'll give you an example. Currently, we have 26 members, meaning sworn and civilian, so sworn is, of course, square law enforcement, um, 26 that are quarantined or isolated. So 18 police officers, two sergeants, six civilians that for a total of 14 that have actually tested positive for COVID, that are COVID positive right now. Um, so, so that's just to kind of give you a number of where we went from to where we are today. And in regards to vaccinations, we don't require that a member or mandate that a person has to take the vaccine, just like in society in general. So um, it's a choice we highly encourage. Um, I lead by example. I was one of the first, along with Chief Craig, to actually get vaccinated. But right now, we stand at um, under 50%. So I'll get you that exact number as to our members that are vaccinated right now. But I know it's up under 50%. And so members who are vaccinated in accordance with um, CDC guidelines and my OSHA, we're just waiting on the the. July 1st so that things will open back up. Got it, got it. Uh, compare and contrast uh, department morale a year ago when there was still a lot of uncertainty, there was still uh, so many officers being quarantined to now where, uh, you know, the pandemic is still ongoing, but it's looking like things are slowly returning to normal. Yeah, we, early on, we actually lost people. So a good friend of mine, Jonathan, Parnell, um, he succumbed to COVID. And matter of fact, I look real closely. You know, some of some of our folks, you know, I just as a reminder, I just keep this close and handy. It's a bit is his obituary. So he succumbed to COVID. Um, 
on, on March 24th, 2020. And we just had recently took a trip to Los Angeles to study their police department. And so, and, and we all know that we lost a couple folks. I'll give you an example. So we lost J Captain Jonathan Parnell. We lost one of our 911 um, call takers in the official title is um, emergency service dispatch operator. We lost Sean Pride. Um, he had been with the city for more than 11 years. And then we have civilian volunteers that work with us as well that come out. So one of our police chaplains, Commander Chaplain Valerie Parks, she came to COVID. And then our reserves, we lost two police reserves also, police reserve Gus Thompson Hughes and uh, police reserve Captain Ernest Robinson. And I think that really they got the most national attention was um, our little beloved Skylar Herbert and her mother is, is um, Vonda Herbert and her father was E.B. E, e. Herbert from the Detroit Fire Department. So um, we've actually dedicated and named our, it used to be our Michigan room, you know, where you come and interview um, the, the, the chief and, and, and where all the press conferences I have, that's now the dedicated to Skylar Herbert. Um, have you gotten any sense of vaccine hesitancy in officers? Uh, you know, you said it's just under 50% vaccinated. Um, is there some sort of uh, vaccine hesitancy going on with officers? Is that something that's being talked about? It's the general population. Um, officers are no different from the rest of us. So it's, it's the same thing that we typically hear with um, just citizens in general, they, they, they have the same emotions, the same fears. And so when we talk about hesitancy, when I talk to individuals, whether it's a police officer, a firefighter, a child care worker, nurses even, some nurses have hesitancy and they actually work in the hospital. And so what they'll say is, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to see. And my response is, what are you waiting on? Are you waiting me to grow an extra arm or, you know, a, a third eye or something? You know, it's like, let's, let's, let's get it done. So um, I, I can definitely understand something new, but people are, are, some folks are hesitant, but I can tell you this, we know what COVID will do. You can just look at the numbers and you see how COVID has killed and I've lost so many folks. And then the other thing that we, that, that, that people really don't talk about when it comes to COVID is the internal damage that it does to organs and then the long-term effects. So I'm going to take a chance and bet on the vaccine. So I've had it. My wife has had it. Um, many of my loved ones have had it. And so we got a lot of officers who have had it, but it's still some who are, are, are going to continue to wait and see. Yeah, given the public facing nature of policing, obviously uh, officers coming into contact with people, with motorists, with uh, just civilians on the street. Um, you know, some people are concerned that the department vaccination rate isn't higher. Uh, because of the, you know, public nature of the job. Um, you know, how do you feel about, you know, that, re that public responsibility to make sure everyone is safe and healthy? It, it once again, it's a, it's a choice. And, you know, in the United States of America, we, whether you're police, you still don't give up your constitutional rights, your health rights. So as a result of that, we're not mandating um, folks in other parts or other professions. You just can't do it. And so um, we're, we're not there. We will continue to encourage. And I think that the natural trend will be that folks will eventually start to come on board as far as the vaccination. But there's so much misinformation out there too. We're doing our part. We, we've had conferences, video Zoom conferences, where we brought in doctors um, from the, the Detroit Health Department. We brought in um, the DMC and actually had doctors that will talk to our general population of officers, work very closely with the unions. But I do believe that as we get back to normal and, and everything opens up and you see places like cruise lines and other places say, listen, if you're not vaccinated, then you won't be able to get on this cruise ship. And I believe at that point, you're gonna see a lot more people saying when their family's vaccinated and everybody's going except they can't go, I think that'll be another push or thing to encourage people to say, okay, I'm going to do it. But at the end of the day, you're going to always still have holdouts. I was talking to a gentleman yesterday and he stated because he had COVID, he felt that his antibodies were enough. 
And, you know, I tried to convince him to get vaccinated. I even have a mask that says masked up, but still back, you know, uh, vaccinated, but still masked up. And I wear that with pride. Yeah, I got one that says the same thing. <laughs> so uh, you actually answered all my questions. Uh, but lastly, was there anything in regards to uh, public safety around COVID-19, especially since things are going to be opening up soon, uh, that you would like the public to kind of be aware of and, and be thinking of? I will say this, um, regardless of the vaccination rate of the, of the department, if you look at the numbers that I gave, we don't, as large as we are, over 2,500 members, we don't have a lot of members out that um, um, with COVID or even I isolated right now, it is due to the protocols that we put in place. We have strong policies that mandated social distancing and mask wearing, mask wearing. And as a result, we check for compliance and officers were held accountable, you know, if they're not wearing their mask, it would be pulled to the side, talk to, et cetera. And we we're constantly checking. And with the with the protocol, this is just a copy of it, I can provide a copy of our policy, but it says department COVID-19 response, where we put that in our manual. And so just with just with some of the things, you know, we got a whole process for exposure, isolation, um, workplace monitoring. And before you come into the building, you have to actually get screened. We take your temperature multiple times a day. We would require also if an officer went on vacation and they were separated from the department for more than 14 days, um, I believe it's seven days, that they would have to actually get a, a COVID test before they could come back to work. So we did a lot of things to ensure that we kept our members safe, but then we also kept the community safe in general. All right. Assistant Chief Todd Bettison, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Oh, thank you, Bryce. I appreciate you also.